Good morning. Welcome to everyone to worship on this beautiful day, and a special welcome to all of our visitors and guests who are here with us this morning, as well as to everyone joining us by video and podcast. We want our visitors and guests to know that we practice open communion. We invite all baptized Christians to receive the Lord's Supper with us this morning. There is a change to our bulletin. The hymn, Seek Ye First, is number 783 in With One Voice. The schedule for our midweek Lenten services for this year is printed in your bulletin. You are invited to attend our first midweek Lenten service this coming Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. We will also be serving pre-packaged snacks and drinks after worship each week. If you would be willing to provide snacks, please feel free to sign up on the sheet in the fellowship hall. This Sunday, or this Palm Sunday, April 10th, we will be bringing back the reading of the Passion Story in parts. If you would be interested in reading a part, please feel free to sign up on the sheet in the fellowship hall. The other announcements I leave to your own reading. Are there any other announcements for this morning? Tom. Certainly. Thank you, Debbie. Are there any other announcements for this morning? Let us begin with prayer. O Lord, our Maker, Redeemer, and Comforter, we are assembled in your presence to hear your holy word. We ask you to open our hearts by your Holy Spirit, that through the preaching of your word we may be taught to repent of our sins, to believe on Jesus in life and death, and to grow day by day in grace and holiness. Hear us for Christ's sake. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The scriptures tell us that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. within and around us, 
and our ancient foe tempts us with his deceits and empty promises. Keep us steadfast in your word, and when we fall again, raise us and restore us. Our Lord, amen. For you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, amen. You may be seated as we continue with the readings. First reading today is from Deuteronomy 26, verses 5 through 10. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God, My father was a wandering Armenian, and he went down into Egypt with a few people, and lived there, and became a great nation, powerful and numerous. But the Egyptians mistreated us and made us suffer, putting us to hard labor. Then we cried out to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our misery, toil, and oppression. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with great terror and with miraculous signs and wonders. He brought us to this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now I bring the first fruits of the soil that you, O Lord, have given me. Place the basket before the Lord your God and bow down before him. The second reading is from Romans 10, verses 8 through 13. But what does it say? The word is near you, it is in your mouth and in your heart, that is, the word of faith we are preaching. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and you are justified, and it is with your mind that you confess and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter, beginning at the first verse. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan 
and was led by the Spirit in the desert, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell the stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor, for it has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. So if you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, it says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Dear brothers and sisters, grace and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Many years ago, one of my former church family members at the congregation I served in Northern California, who is now with the Lord, would frequently tell a story about something to her on September 12, 2001 the day after the events of 9-11. She was working in her front yard that day, and a group of door-to-door -door missionaries from a certain organization were going around the neighborhood. They came up to her and asked if she was aware of what had happened the day before. Her response was simple. Yes, the devil's been very busy, hasn't he? Which effectively ended the conversation because she did have a good point. It did seem like the devil had been very busy, with the mayhem and destruction that had taken place on 9-11. And nowadays, it's not hard to imagine that the devil still continues to be busy. At least the past two weeks have demonstrated that, unfortunately, at times, evil continues to rear its ugly head. We hear stories and see pictures of the destruction caused by the constant bombardment of homes and cities in Ukraine as Russia continues to step up its invasion. We hear of innocent people being killed, especially in bombing attacks. We hear of refugees having to flee their homes. In many cases, we hear of the shock many refugees express at the fact that, that in many cases, only the day before, they were going about their normal lives, living as they had always done, and then all of a sudden they had to pack up and flee across the border to a different country. We also hear of and experience the effects of the war taking place even over here in our own country, as gas prices continue to soar, causing the prices of everything else to soar, as it has been doing all along because of the effects of the pandemic. So in all honesty, it's not hard for us to say that the devil has been very busy lately. This has always seemed to be the case as well. This is certainly not the first time many of us have lived through an economic crisis. This is also certainly not the first time many of us have lived through a war or the effects of a war. 9-11, which was mentioned earlier, for example, forced us to face the reality of terrorism, especially religious terrorism, and how bad it could get even here in this country. We have also faced many situations that have shown us that we still have to live with evil. We have had crimes committed against us. We have been cheated. We have either had to suffer abuse or have had a close friend or family member suffer abuse. We have had to deal with conflict, whether in our families or in our communities. We have had to deal with bullying in our schools. We have had to deal with the pain of dysfunctional and broken relationships. We have had to suffer disasters, which have caused destruction to our properties or even our physical well-beings. We wonder where there, whether there is any hope, help or relief in sight, any end to our suffering, 
or the sufferings of our friends and family members. We watch the news and wonder whether there is going to be, whether there is ever going to be, an end to the war going on in Ukraine and Russia. We hear of ongoing hatred between people for different reasons and the violence and murder caused by such hatred. We keep having to experience bullying in different ways and wonder if there is anything we can do to stop it completely. We hear and experience all the other ways that people attempt to hurt and destroy each other. It's easy for us to think that the devil is busy and evil is going to win. Evil continues to be a reality we have to live with. And yet, today we also hear some good news. Even though the devil's always busy, and even though there are times he seems to be busier than others, he is ultimately defeated. The purpose of Lent is for us to remember that even though evil continues to be a reality, there is an even greater reality. Jesus has already defeated the power of the devil and the power of evil. The reason he came to die on the cross and rise again was to defeat the devil. The devil continues to try to ruin people's lives, but everything he tries will ultimately fail and be defeated. He cannot win. God has always been more powerful than the devil and evil, and he still continues to be more powerful than the devil and evil. This is something God has always been doing. As we hear about in today's first reading from Deuteronomy, which Don read for us just a few moments ago, we hear about how God wanted his people and how he wants us, his people, to remember that he delivered them from slavery and suffering and brought them to a place where they needed to be. He is even still doing the same thing for us today. He is still delivering us from our suffering and bringing us to where we need to be. In fact, in just a few moments, as we receive communion, that's exactly what we're going to be doing. Remembering Jesus' sacrifice as we receive his body and blood, and remembering the suffering that he went through to deliver us from the power of the devil and the power of evil and bring us to where we need to be. And as we hear about in today's gospel reading, Jesus was even able to defeat the devil by using the word of God against the devil, by using the truth of God against the devil. Even though the devil himself tried to quote the Bible to tempt Jesus, Jesus was able to see through his lies and tell the truth to defeat the devil. We always have to remember that the devil is a liar. Everything he says is a lie. Whatever he claims is, going to, is always going to be reality is a lie. If we're being told that there is no hope for this world, that there will never be an end to whatever war and conflict happens to be taking place, that is a lie from the devil. If we're being told that we're going to be stuck in whatever per difficult or sad situation we're in permanently, that is a lie from the devil. If we're being told that we're on our own, there is no help, not even from God, that is a lie from the devil. If we're being told that whatever evil we're having to suffer is coming from God, especially as a punishment, that is a lie from the devil. If we're being told, especially using Bible verses, that we deserve whatever bad thing is happening to us because of who we are or something we've done, that is a lie from the devil. If we're being told that we deserve whatever abuse we get because of something we've done or haven't done, that is a lie from the devil. So even though the devil may still be real, everything he says is not real. So what is real? Simple. Jesus is real. Even though the devil may be busy, Jesus is even busier. 
We may think that Jesus is simply sitting back, watching everything unfold, letting the devil do whatever he wants to do. But that itself is a lie. That is a lie the devil perpetrates. Wherever the devil is trying to stir up trouble, Jesus is right there fighting against him and frustrating his plans. Wherever war is taking place, Jesus is working to bring peace and an end to the war, as we believe he is doing in Ukraine right now. Wherever people are suffering at the hands of other people, Jesus is fighting on their side and rescuing them from those who are hurting them. Wherever people are suffering from any lack of any kind of need, Jesus is working on providing them with what they need. Wherever people are having to suffer from the effects of having given in to temptation and have wrecked or destroyed their lives in the process, Jesus is working on forgiving them, having them forgive themselves, and restoring their lives, restoring them to where he wants them to be. Wherever people are suffering the effects of abuse, Jesus is working on rescuing them and healing them in body and mind, and letting them know they didn't deserve the abuse they had to suffer. Wherever people are suffering in broken relationships, Jesus is working on rescuing them and healing them from what they have had to suffer. Wherever people are fighting with each other over differences in religion, politics, or other opinion, Jesus is working to bring peace, an end to conflict, and restore relationships and friendships. Wherever people have had to deal with the destruction of disaster, whether natural or human-made, Jesus is working to restore what has been lost. Just as even in Old Testament times, God, through Jesus, is working hard to deliver us from our suffering. He is working hard to deliver us from slavery, to feel like we are trapped in the suffering of the world and the suffering we or other people inflict on us. Jesus is even fighting for us right here, right now. And what can we do? Trust him and let him fight for us. Even though there are things we may be having to fight right now, we are not fighting them alone. Jesus is fighting for us, and he can fight even better than we can. Whatever battle we're having to fight, we can let go of. We can stop trying to fight. We can stop trying to figure out how we're going to win and let Jesus fight and win our battle for us. He already did so by his death and resurrection. He defeated the devil and the powers of evil. Jesus' victory is already guaranteed because the devil has already lost. And the devil knows he's already lost. The devil knows whatever he ma he's making us suffer isn't going to last forever, and Jesus is ultimately going to win. The devil knows that those who are attacking us and trying to hurt us in any way are ultimately going to be defeated. And we're going to win because Jesus is going to win. So the unfortunate reality is the devil is going to try harder than ever to bring us down. He's going to try to step up his attacks. He's going to try to escalate the war in Eastern Europe. He is going to try to cause abuse and dysfunction in families and relationships to become even worse. He is going to try to stir up even more conflict and hatred between people. He is going to try to, to cause children and adults to bully each other even more. He is going to try to cause even more trouble among us by causing the effects of the war and the pandemic to escalate. He's going to try to make it look like he's going to win. He's ultimately going to try to put us to shame 
and make us regret trusting Jesus to fight and win for us. But he won't succeed. He won't succeed. And here's why. In today's second reading, in Romans 10, verse 11, we have a solid promise from God's word. Anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Another way to understand this is to say that anyone who trusts in Jesus will never regret it. Anyone who trusts in Jesus will never be embarrassed. Anyone who trusts in Jesus will never be disappointed or let down. Even though there have been a lot of people in our lives who have let us down, Jesus will never let us down. Even though there have been people who have promised to be there for us in times of trouble or conflict, but have ended up running away and leaving us, Jesus will never leave us alone. Even though the devil may try to convince us that trusting in Jesus is stupid, embarrassing, and will ultimately disappoint us, Jesus himself begs to differ. Jesus has never and will not let anyone who trusts in him be disappointed in any way. If anything, Jesus will shame the devil and will shame those who try to convince us of the devil's lies. Jesus will embarrass those who try to embarrass us for trusting that Jesus is going to fight and win for us. Jesus is going to call out the lies of the devil, just like he did before in the desert. Jesus will never treat us the way other people have treated us. He will never disappoint us. He will keep his word. He will keep his promises. He will do everything he has said he will do. He will never give us any reason to regret trusting him to fight and win for us. He will, do, he will forgive us. He will heal us. He will restore us. He will defeat the devil. And the devil has already lost. So even though it may seem, right now especially, like the devil is busy, Jesus will put an end to the devil and all his works. Jesus will deliver us. He has already won. And no one who trusts him to fight and win will ever be let down or disappointed. The devil has already been defeated. His lies have already been defeated. No one who trusts in Jesus will ever regret it. So let us trust Jesus to fight and win because he has already fought and won for us and he will win. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
now together let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please feel free to place your offering in either one of the plates at the back of the sanctuary. We wish to let our visitors and guests know that you are under no obligation to give. This service is our gift to you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you O Lord Holy Father through Christ our Lord you bid your people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast Renew our zeal in faith and life, and bring us to the fullness of grace that belongs to the children of God. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. This is the Lord's table, to which he invites all who believe and are baptized to come and feast on his body and blood. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Come, for all is ready.
Please stand for our post-communion liturgy. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.